So I want to start by saying thank you everyone for joining. My name is Cody Armstrong and today uh, we're talking about collaboration and in specifically we want to create a series of webinars that really highlight some of the differences between using a traditional CAD system and the way Onshape works. Um, and so a lot of these webinars that you're going to see, very short webinars, really focused on, you know, just key elements of Onshape that can really change, you know, how you work every day. Um, so again, very short, we're going to focus on, you know, just some traditional CAD workflows for collaboration and how Onshape can improve on them. So let's dig in. Now, as I always say with these webinars, we really encourage you to ask any questions that you'd like. Um, there's a questions dialogue and you go to a webinar panel. Feel free to type in any question that you'd like. I'll do my best uh, from time to time to stop and address them. And if I don't get to your question, uh, stick around. I'll make sure after the webinar's over to make sure to, to answer any outstanding questions. Um, so let's dig in. Now, before I get into the topic of the day, there are a few things I'd like to mention about Onshape in general. So if you're new to Onshape, uh, maybe you're just getting started. The first thing I'd like to mention about Onshape is our mission statement. And that is getting everyone working together with CAD on any device, anywhere. And it has a lot to do with what we're talking about today in collaboration. You know, sharing in real time. The ability to access your CAD data from any device, whether it's Android, iOS, um, even, you know, Mac, Windows, Linux, Chromebooks, really accessibility from anywhere. So everyone working together with CAD on any device, anywhere, that's our goal, that's our mission with Onshape. Now, the other thing that I always like to point out about Onshape is we do consider ourselves professional 3D CAD. When you think of professional 3D CAD, it's really three pieces, parts, assemblies, and of course, drawings. And we do have all three major pieces of a professional 3D CAD system. The thing that's unique about Onshape is that you'll see it evolve very quickly. Uh, so instead of a yearly update where, you know, you have one, um, you know, update per, you know, of functionality per year and a bunch of uh, bug fixes, with Onshape you're going to see new functionality roughly every three weeks. So we're evolving very quickly. And the neatest thing is from an end user perspective, you don't have to do anything. There's no installs or upgrades that you have to manage yourself. Uh, you just simply log in and you'll see new functionality. So parts, assemblies, and drawings, we have all three major pieces and we're evolving very quickly. You're going to see them update you know, roughly every three weeks. Also with Onshape comes built-in version control. So if you've come from another CAD system and you're used to PDM systems, uh, data management systems, um, they're not needed in Onshape's case. You know, the, the data management uh, aspect of checking in and checking out and managing files, a lot of the capabilities or functionality that you purchase in a PDM system simply isn't needed in an Onshape uh, world. So with Onshape, we have built-in version control, but it's very different than file management. And then that's something that I'm going to point out here in just a second. So with Onshape, we have built-in version control. It doesn't take anything separate. It's actually built into the core, and it's not something you have to manage separately. Also, if you come from another CAD system, we can import and export a lot of the CAD, common CAD formats that you may have been working with. So step, I just Parasolid, SolidWorks, Inventor, Creo, Katia, you know, the list goes on and on of all the different formats that we can both import and export. So read and write a lot of common CAD formats um, so we can work alongside well, um, you know, an existing CAD system, something that you may have already been using. The last thing I want to mention, it's very much what we're talking about here today in general, and that is entirely new methods of collaboration. With Onshape, we've introduced, you know, entirely new features for collaborative CAD that, that simply didn't exist before. You know, things like real-time collaboration and all these real-time capabilities, you know, come from an architecture shift, come from a redesign of a CAD tool. So... Um, starting from scratch gives us a lot of unique capabilities. So one of them is entirely new methods of collaboration, which we're going to focus on here today. So let's get into the topic of the day, and that is, of course, uh, collaboration. Now, the one thing I want to highlight is how collaboration is typically done today. And this is just something that I think from an end user perspective, you, you just get so used to it that over time, you forget how tedious it becomes. You know, uh, So one of the things I always like to point out is you know, how much work it is today using a traditional CAD system to manage all the files and the passing of data back and forth and updates and references and all the things that are associated with it. 
So one of the things I want to highlight is how traditional uh, collaboration is done with traditional CAD systems, emailing files, viewers, and so on. And the idea behind it is look at on, how Onshape solves these problems. And as I mentioned before, that's really the goal with these is we, we want to take a, a fresh look at how users work and ways that we could solve these issues with our unique architecture. And so the idea behind it is, you know, Onshape solves the issues of collaboration, for example, because we're not working with files, per se. We're not working with, you know, transferring these files back and forth. So we're going to look at how Onshape solves those problems. As I mentioned before, we're going to answer any questions that pop up. So again, feel free to type in any questions. It's going to be a bit shorter than uh, our usual webinars. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. So let's dig in. Now, um, I do have a few more slides. One of the first is, you know, what are the reasons this is becoming a bigger issue? And in, in general, it, it's largely um, something you'll see in a, in a bigger shift in, in, you know, the industry. And that is more distributed design. Uh, you'll find that, you know, it, it, in, you know, 30, 40 years ago, a lot of the design and manufacturing, everything took place under a single roof, but that's really no longer the case. You know, a lot of times, I'm working with an engineer in a different, you know, town, you know, could be a different country. Um, and I'm working with, you know, a vendor from this, you know, area of, you know, this state and a vendor from um, someone, you know, an entirely different, again, you know, state, country, whatever it may be. So you're working with these teams that are not in the same location, physical location. And when, when that happens, uh, transferring the data becomes a very big concern. You know, how do I get the data when the person isn't physically inside of my network that I need to share with? So design teams changing and the need for sharing data has changed with it. You know, the ability um, to share your data outside of your network is becoming a big concern. How do I manage VPNs and all these things to get all my data into and out of my network, you know, to the people that need it? So um, globally distributed design teams and, and you know, um, it's just the distributed network of, of vendors and so on really warrants an architecture change. Now, the other element of this is just simply mobile. The ability to share your designs uh, mobily is something that is, is somewhat difficult to do in a traditional CAD system. Right now, installs a viewer, and then you have to be emailed a file, for example, and then you can run it. But, um, you know, there are, you know, hurdles, so to speak, for, for accessing your data on a mobile device. Um, Question, where is the data for the parts stored? Um, when you design models in Onshape, they're, they're stored in the cloud. So everything you design in Onshape is stored in the cloud. Um, now, if you're asking specifically about you know, things like where the data is physically located, um, we rely on what's referred to as Amazon Web Services. So for those that are familiar with it, uh, Amazon has an architecture for um, web design cloud computing, and that's what we rely on for a lot of our infrastructure. So if you're asking for specifics, that's what we're referred to. But all of your design data is stored in the cloud, and that's a lot of the big benefit to what we're talking about here today, is that instead of having a single file that gets passed back and forth between multiple people, there's only one true source of data. So instead of having copies and who has the latest version, overriding and replacing references, there's only one design and you're allowing people access to that design via a share mechanism. So it's a different, it's a shift in how we think. Okay? Um, but in short, you know, everything you do in Onshape is stored in the cloud. Your, your design um, is stored securely in the cloud. So again, globally distributed networks, you know, working with vendors, working with a lot of different people that it, it may not be in the same network that I'm in. Uh, and it often changes. So I may work with this vendor at this project, and then that changes, you know, a few months later to a different vendor at a different project. And so you're constantly managing these access and all these different permissions to allow that person to share your design, or you're emailing a lot of files back and forth, right? And that's another a very common workflow when we're trying to work with, with, you know, someone outside of my direct design team. Uh, and even those in the design team, you know, in, in many situations, you know, the design team itself is becoming more distributed. You know, I work with someone that's, you know, works from home or works remote or works from, you know, um, the field. So um, the biggest thing is with all of this distribution of the actual um, teams, file management becomes a huge headache. 
And in general, it can become such a headache that it literally costs time and time to market. And that's one of the biggest things that we run into is that engineers and, and even whole IT teams are dedicated to managing these files. So the idea behind it is, you know, we need something that gets us faster to market where we don't have to worry about data management as much. Um, and the idea is, you know, we want more innovation, more mobility, the ability to access this data from anywhere, and the ability to collaborate with others. So these were some of the challenges that are you're running into with a traditional CAD system today. And what I really want to do is kind of highlight how it works. So let's take a, a really high level look at, you know, how a traditional CAD user might share the document today. So the biggest thing to realize with a, a traditional CAD system is that everyone has to have a local installation, right? So it means that anyone I'm sharing with needs to download anywhere from a few gig to, you know, 10 gig of data and install it and license it and so on. So um, when we talk about traditional CAD systems one, and, and trying to collaborate with someone, someone else, one of the first problems you'll run into is do they have the right software? Right. Do they have it installed? Do I need to send them a link? Do they need to pay for software so that they can open up my model and, and edit it? You know, what, what's needed in these situations? So the first thing to realize when you're collaborating is do they have software installed locally? With a traditional CAD system, that's generally how it's done. Um, and that means that you need to check this out. Do they have, more importantly, the right version? Right. So it may be, you know, that they went out and bought the CAD software and they have the windows and the special hardware to run the CAD software and they've downloaded the eight or nine gigabytes to install it. But then they realize it's last year's version and they can't open your file. Right. So um, it it's more than just simply do they have it installed? Do they have it licensed? But is it also the correct version? So the big concern you have to have is, you know, are we on the right versions and, you know, is it installed? And that's one of the biggest, you know, hangups when we talk about collaboration. I can't share with so-and-so because they don't have the CAD software. They don't have a view over the CAD software. We don't have a license for them to open up that CAD file. So that's one of the biggest concerns a new user has you know, when they're trying to share, share their model with someone else. Um, and it means a big, long process as well. So getting a new user up to speed or tr getting a new collaborator, a new vendor up to speed can take days, um, you know, where they can actually view your file and actually work with you. So traditional CAD really slows the, the restricts the environment that you may be working with and um, just in general causes a lot of headaches. And the main reason behind this is because it's all built off of CAD files. So in a traditional CAD application, of course, you're saving individual files for parts, assemblies, and drawings, and, and so on. So everything is a file-based infrastructure. And in general, the file-based infrastructure is just not terribly conducive to collaboration. Um, and, and that's one of the biggest issues that you'll have. And it's not just CAD data. Uh, it could be Word docs. You know, It could be Excel spreadsheets. You know, those kinds of things generally aren't uh, that collaborative in terms of tools because of the nature of them. They're built off of a file-based uh, structure. And so what does this mean for the user? Well, oftentimes they have to distribute these files with flash drives, with email, with FTPs, even with dedicated you know, servers. Uh, you have dedicated file servers with VPN access rights and all these um, things that you have to manage you know, every year with updates and so on, um, all to allow to share a file. It also means that in general, the process, because a file is being shared and can only be edited by one person at a time, it's very much an isolating process. That means that users today aren't aware of what's going on. So for instance, if I have a CAD file open, I'm editing an assembly, no one else can see what's happening with that assembly until I save it. And in, in the cases of PDM systems, actually check it back into that you know, data vault, so to speak. Um, before anyone's aware of what's going on. So it means that we can't work simultaneously. I have to wait for someone else to finish my work before I can start mine, uh, finish their work before I can start my own. So it, it, it creates this domino effect of having to wait because files are checked out or have you know don't have access or so on. Um, so in general, the file-based nature of it uh, means that it's very isolating and you're not aware of it. And that in of itself costs time. Right, just because you're you, the in, uh, the inability to see what's going on, 
But the other element to think of is the copies and, and all of the, the copies of the data going back and forth. One of the biggest things to point out here is, is the actual loss of security in these situations. If you put the data on a flash drive, if you put the data on an, in an email and send it to someone, uh, you've lost control over who has access to it. Right. In theory, you, you're relying solely on the security and, you know, the the honor of the honesty of the person that you're emailing. Um, so you really don't have access to it. That data could be sent elsewhere. It could be, um, you know, used in a way that you weren't intending. So the first thing to consider is it's just the security aspect of sending copies of CAD files back and forth. Um, the other obvious issue with this is just simply the tedious nature of it, the fact that you're copying, constantly copying data back and forth. You have to remember to copy data back and forth, or is this the latest version? You see a lot of users checking created by dates or last modified dates. They have all these uh, techniques for figuring out what is the latest version. But just simply the act of copying um, creates a heading. Now, if you take this one step further, um, Oftentimes, these solutions don't work and you end up using a cloud storage service. And this is very common today uh, with CAD users because of the large nature of CAD files. They're very big. Um, so, you know, if I want to send someone to my entire assembly, that can be a big file. And, you know, chances are an email uh, won't work. And then I end up importing that data to a cloud storage service and uh, then distributing it to the users that I want to. So um, again, you know, just the nature of sending tons and tons of copies back and forth is what we're trying to eliminate. So we've talked about a few of the things to consider here, you know, just the fact that you're, you're moving this data back and forth, that uh, no one really has any idea of what the, the latest is, right, until it's checked back in or saved it. So you have this constant workflow of who has the latest version, where is the latest version, um, you know, that's always causing issues with a traditional CAD system like this. So the idea behind Onshape is, is we wanted to, to change this from a file-based infrastructure that, that means passing files back and forth, opening, you know, closing, saving, and then, of course, we haven't mentioned it yet, but replacing references, right? So when I send data back and forth, I have to replace the references and the names and so on. So trying to take away that, you know, manual management of all these files and passing data back and forth for something that's a little bit more streamlined. Now, admittedly, you know, it, it's, it's something that's been done in other industries. So the example I might give you is, is uh, Microsoft Word, for example, versus um, Google Docs, where, you know, in, in the past, it was a file-based system. If I wanted to send someone, if I wanted to send a Word doc around to three or four people and have them edit it and give me their feedback, they would send me three or four files back and I have to, you know, figure out the differences between them and then merge those changes with my own. And it's a very tedious manual process of probably copying and pasting. So getting feedback and working with others using a file-based system, even an example like Word, you know, was very tedious. And then we have something like Google Docs come along, where it allows two or three people to edit the same document at the same time. And this means that users aren't doing this back and forth with files, right? Everyone can see what's going on at the same exact time. So that's really the idea behind Onshape, is we wanted one document that is the only CAD file, right? The only um, source of truth, so to speak. And I shouldn't say file. We, we're not using a file-based system here. Um, it is a database structure. And the idea behind that is it allows us uh, to have multiple people edit at the same time. So the architecture shift here it eliminates the need um, for passing CAD data back and forth right? with one set of data. And then users access that set of data from really any device uh, means there's only one version of the model, right? We don't have to worry about who has the latest, where is that file, do I need to replace references, my assembly's broken. Those kinds of issues simply don't happen because of um, because of Onshape's unique architecture. So the main thing here is everyone's always on the same CAD system, and everyone's always on the same using the same CAD data. Um, because Onshape itself runs in the cloud, there's only one version of Onshape. Uh, and because the data itself is also stored in the cloud, there's only one version of the data. 
and everyone accesses the same CAD data at the same time. There's never any copies. So the idea behind this is your distributed team doesn't have to transfer data back and forth, replace references, and work in their own individual sandbox and then send things back and forth. They can all work at the same time, you know, connected. Um, so that's the idea behind Onshape. And again, it, it's, a, it, it's a shift from the traditional file-based approach. You know, there are no files in Onshape. Each Onshape document uh, is a database, and, it'll, and it you know, is constantly tracking your changes. One of the biggest um, tips of this, one of the biggest indications that the, the architecture is different is the history. I can see every little change that's ever happened to the document since it's been created in Onshape. That's something you can't do in a file-based system, right? So I can see, you know, changes from anyone at any time through the, the Onshape history, right? So again, your documents are databases and they, they're allowing you to, you know, share in real time with other users. So let's get into it. Now, um, I wanted to give you a quick demo of how this works, so bear with me. All right, so what I'd like to do is just show you briefly here um, how collaboration works in Onshape. So let's jump into a quick example of this. Now, uh, it's very simple, um, and the idea behind this is we wanted to be able to share and, and get access to your document in a matter of seconds. Right? So instead of downloading and installing or paying for licenses or doing all these headaches to be able to open up a CAD model, uh, we wanted a, a user to be able to click a link and within seconds be looking at the same model you are and, and at the same time. So how do we share? Uh, well, the biggest thing is, again, if you're familiar with Google Docs, uh, there's a very similar workflow to Google Docs here, but there's a big share button in the top right corner. So you'll see this share button. You hit share and you enter their email address. Now, even if they don't have an Onship account, we create one on the fly for them. So even if the person you're inviting, uh, even if the person you, you're trying to share with has never heard of Onshape, um, we, create an, we create an account, we send them a link, uh, they create their login, and they're looking at the same model you are. Right? And from that point forward, once they have the Onshape account, they literally click a link and it takes them right to the document. So it's very easy, they don't have to do anything more than you know create that initial login. Now, the important thing I want to point out here is you define their email address, you define their permission, a very important step. You know, what kind of permission do I want to give this person? Uh, I can give them edit and share, edit, view and comment, and view. So if I'm looking for, you know, just the ability to share with someone so they can look at the model and nothing else, that's, of course, can view. Uh, maybe I want to share the model and allow them to give me some feedback. That's can view and comment it allows them to add comments to your document. A great way to share with vendors or maybe the machine shop, for example, where you may need some feedback about the design. So can view and comment. You also have can edit, which is pretty obvious. It allows them to edit the model. And then can edit and share allows them to edit, but also share the model with others. Right. So pretty granular controls on the permissions, but definitely worth checking out when you first share your document. Remember, any documents you create in Onshape by default are private. Uh, means only you can access your documents until you decide to share it. Now, the other element I want to point out about this is once I've shared it, if I decide, let's share this um, with someone else here. If I decide later to um, remove that permission, I can do that. So again, if in a traditional CAD system, you may email um, someone and say, okay, um, you know, here's my CAD file. But once you've emailed that person, they download the file to their computer, again, you've lost control. You have no idea what happened to that CAD file. I can go in and remove the permission for this person. So once I'm done working with this person, I can hit the X here and that will remove the permission that they have to the document. Okay. So definitely something I want to point out, um, you know, when you're doing this, that you have the ability to control who has access to your document and at what times.
you can remove that permission and you can change it. So if I decide that, you know, at first they have the ability to edit, I want them to be able to change the design, but later on I'm going to change their permission to can view. You know, I can go and do that as well. Now, another element I want to add to this is if you're working with, you know, single, you know, individuals, this is a great approach. Email them and they get instant access, but you can also create a team in Onshape and it's just an easy share mechanism. I can share with a dozen people in a team all at once rather than typing in individual email addresses. So if you're working with a larger group, creating a team makes it much easier. All right, so I've shared this. Now, the thing I want to point out is they get instant access. So they get an, an immediate email letting them know, you know, they've created or someone, some document has been shared with you. They click a link and you get immediate feedback that they're in the document. So in Onshape, you'll see a little cue that they're in your document. You'll get visual feedback that they're in your document. And again, you know, just driving home the idea that we're, we're looking at the same model at the same time, if he decides to make a change to the design, you're going to see it update in real time. So you can see here he's moving up the suspension, moving up and down, and you can see the model change in real time. Um, so again, you're both working on the same document at the same time. Okay? And, and that's the idea behind a real-time collaboration. You'll even get visual feedback. So if he goes in and, and changes, for instance, um, makes a change to this design. Let's do a quick shell. And if I jump over to that document, you'll notice he's in it. If I jump to the dog bone link tab, you'll notice new feature. So you'll even get real-time feedback that new features are being created You'll know what tab they're in and if they're creating new features in your model. And if a new feature is created, the moment it's created, the second it's created, it gets pushed to your um, document. Right? So again, everyone's looking at the same model at the same time. You get real-time feedback that you're working in the same document together. Right? Again, you'll see the new feature being created indicating that you're working together. Okay. So last thing I'm going to do before I move on, we'll just add a couple of quick fillets to this. And again, the moment it's accepted, I immediately see it here. Now I mentioned before um, that history is one of the biggest indications um, that it's a different system, that we're not using a file-based approach here. And so if I go into the versions manager and I go into show the changes, I want to point some things out. You'll see that the changes being made, um, or every single change being made is listed here. So the insert fillets, the shell, the dragging, you know, editing frame, for instance, every little change to the document is stored. And I can go back to any point and restore the document. So it means that I, I can make these changes without worrying about creating a, a broken state of the model, so to speak. And that's often a concern for users. Is, you know, what if I make these changes and I can't go back to the way it was? All right? it, or it's a big headache to go back to the way it was. And that's the idea behind history. You can do anything you'd like, go in, and if you've decided that, that you just want to restore back, you can choose any point and restore back to it. Um, okay, so I've pointed out real-time collaboration. You share with the user. You can share with as many as you want. Um, you can all work in the same document. Whether you want to work on the same model, maybe you have you know, 100 parts of an assembly and you want to have two or three people put it together at the same time, that's a great use case for it. But you can also just work together in the same model. As I mentioned before, one of the biggest problems with file-based CAD is just the isolation element of it. The fact that I don't know what happened to that assembly until it's been checked in or it's been saved and then I open it up. With Onshape, you can see everyone's work in real time. So it means that I know exactly what's going on. I don't have to wait for someone else to finish something for me to start. And so that domino effect of having to wait for CAD files to be managed uh, doesn't happen here, or it doesn't happen in Onshape. So um, real-time collaboration is a big benefit. Now, there are a few other elements that I'd like to point out here. And one of the first is the comment capabilities. So you know, one of the commonly asked, you know, question is, can I do things like mark up and, and tell someone something that I'm sharing the document with? 
And this capability is actually built in. So if you right click, for instance, a face or an edge or a feature in the feature list, for example, you can right click and add a comment. You'll see an add comment. And what this does is it tags the thing that you're right clicking. And in my case, it's an edge, but it, and as I mentioned, it could be just about anything. Um, and I can say, okay, is this, if I could type this diameter right, right? Is this diameter right? I can hit add and it adds a comment. Now the neat thing about this is that person will get a notification. So the person I've shared with can then reply, no, it should be one inch. And then I get notification. So you'll see here now it says one reply. So we can communicate to each other uh, through the document, through comments. And the neat thing is it highlights the geometry that I'm referring to. So if I get out of the comment here, if I collapse this, you'll see it disappears. But if I select comments, you'll see a little cue, a little uh, visual cue. And the person you're sharing with also sees this. And if I left click on that, it highlights the comment associated with it. And I can also click on it here and it highlights the geometry associated. So the idea is you're getting these visual cues indicating what they're talking about and you can communicate via the comments. Right. And the idea behind this is, you know, most users today or many users today in a traditional CAD system are sending screenshots with, you know, highlighted screenshots or markups uh, of files back and forth via email. You know, sometimes it's just screenshots. Sometimes you can mark up the file itself. But um, in either situation, you're sending these things back and forth. This is another example where you're collaborating in real time. I'm not waiting to attach emails or manage files or download this or that. I'm working in, you know, one, you know, data set and everyone's working on the same data set. So that's comment capabilities. Again, it allows you to chat in real time. It allows you to, to highlight different pieces of the model and work together. You also get email notifications. So anyone that's shared in this document uh, by default will get notifications um, of these comments. Now you can uncheck that if you don't care for it, but by default it allows you to notify someone with emails. So that is comment capabilities. Now there's one last thing that I wanted to point out with regards to the collaboration tools in Onshape, and that is follow mode. So this is one easy way to highlight geometry and ask a simple question, but oftentimes I may be on the phone with someone and they're trying to say, you know, this is the fill that I'm referring to, or this hole is too small, or this pocket is too deep. Um, and they're, they're referring to something they're looking at on their screen, but of course I can't see their screen, right? So I don't know what feature they're referring to. So follow mode is a great example where I can double click on their social queue, their icon here, indicating that they're in the document, and I see their screen in real time. So this is a great tool for being able to highlight. So I can highlight that this, you know, this is the fillet that I'm referring to, or this is the hole that I'm referring to. And the person that I've shared with uh, can see the exact thing that I'm talking about. So again, you know, just real quickly, double click their social queue in the top right, the, the little, you know, square icon indicating that they're in your document. You double click that icon and they're looking at your screen in real time. Right. And they can highlight different pieces of the model and it makes it very easy to illustrate. No, this is the fill that I'm referring to or this is, you know, the feature that I'm referring to. And you're not sending again, sending screenshots with, you know, um, emails back and forth. So that's follow mode. The key thing there is you double click their social queue in the top right and it takes you into follow mode. Now, to get out of follow mode, you just left click anywhere in space and that will automatically take you out of follow mode. The neat thing about it is it takes you right into the same model orientation that you were looking at on your collaborator screen a second ago. So I don't have to re, you know, position the model back to the way I was looking at it on their screen. I can see it, it immediately drops it into that same orientation on mine. So that is follow mode again, double click their social queue and you're looking at their screen. Um, so just one more layer of the collaborative tools, you know, trying to eliminate the the back and forth with emails and files and screenshots and all the, the tedious nature of that. So that is what I wanted to show with the um, built-in collaboration tools. Now, there's one more element of this that I wanted to show 
before I get into my branch example, and that is um, the mobile. So if you haven't used Onshape on a mobile device, I definitely recommend it. Um, here is Onshape on an iPad, and you have all the same capabilities that you have in a web browser. So I can edit the sketch, for instance, um, double tap, do a view normal to sketch, and I can change dimensions. So if I decide I want to change a value, I can do that. Let's change it to 13. Um, so I can make all these simple tweaks to the model, rebuild it all from a mobile device. So now, no longer does the person you're sharing with need to have a big expensive workstation or you know download you know gigabytes of very expensive software. Um, the person you're sharing with could literally only have an Android phone or an iPhone, and and still collaborate with you. You know, if only just to view, but also you know, edit. If they, if you want to give them that permission, um, they can edit from their mobile device. They can build assemblies from the mobile device. They can view the drawings from their mobile device. So it, it really opens up a layer. And again, you know, the person you're sharing with doesn't have to pay for Onshape Pro. They can be using Onshape on the free account, right? So um, it really means that you can share with just about anyone, and there's very little. Um, overhead for them that you know the the they have to create a uh, login is the most work that they have to do so very easy to share an on shape and, and again with the mobile app you really do have accessibility from anywhere so if you're just sharing maybe with you know the shop floor or the drawings or I'm actually sharing with a coworker and they're in the field they can get access to their data from a mobile device so that is the Onshape app. If you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend it. Now, there's one last thing that I wanted to mention to this, and that is Branch and Merge. Now, Branch and Merge gives you a really unique capability, and it, it's it's another aspect of, again, just a, a bit of a difference uh, in, in how Onshape is constructed. Um, you can take two different designs, uh, two different variations, for instance, and, and, and Onshape will refer to them as branches, and merge them together. And this is something that you can only really dream of using something like a traditional CAD system. Um, you know, merging a bunch of different pieces together um, is a complicated thing. And and because we're, we're able to track everything in the single document, uh, because of the, you know, all of Onshape's history and so on, we can create a capability that allows us to take two different variations of a model and merge them together. The other element I want to point out about this is, you know, up to this point, I've shown you real-time collaboration. You know, uh, two or three, or you know, many different people working in the same document at the same time. But what if I don't want that? What if I want my own workspace to work, and and then, you know, maybe merge those changes with the main workspace later? Or what if I want to explore my own design variation without having to worry about things, you know, being changed? And that's an example where branching comes into play now. Branching allows multiple people to work on design at the same time and not interfere with each other. So if that's your goal, creating a branch is an easy way to do it. Now, the first thing to point out about creating a branch is it requires creating a version. You must branch off an established version. So I'm going to go to Manage Versions. We'll create our initial version. Now, if you haven't created a version yet in Onshape, I mentioned before with Onshape version controls built in, um, this is all it takes to create a version. And what this does is it creates a snapshot of the entire document. So now I have this view only snapshot of initial version uh, that I can always go back. I can go back six months from now. I can go back and look at my design the way it's, you know, it was today at 1038 a.m. So you, you create this, you know, immutable or, or view only snapshot that you can always go back and look at. But the neat thing about it is now that I have this version under the gear menu, I can branch to create a workspace. So I can branch and create a workspace. Let's call this, uh, we're going to create two different design experiments. Let's call this base with tabs and I can hit create. Okay. And now you'll notice I have the base with tabs branch. And you also notice I have the main branch. Let's do that one more time. We're going to create another variation here called square base. So I can build these branches easily. Um, just select the branches you know, from the version you want to branch off of, and you'll see I have square base, base with tabs. By the way, main is still also an active branch. So in theory, I have the main branch and these two others. 
But the neat thing about this is it allows me to explore different designs. Any changes made in the square base branch do not impact the other two. Right? They're only seen in the square base branch. Um, and you can continue editing. So I can go into the main branch, for instance, and add a simple fillet. You know, let's do a eighth inch fillet down the spine. Okay. And what you'll notice is when you make a change, and if I go back to the versions, main is now the most active branch. So you also get visual cues as to what has been changed the most recently, right? In this case, main. So now main has changed. And if I go into, let's say, um, the Squarebase design, and I jump into it, I just left click it in the versions manager. Now Squarebase loads, notice no fillet on the spine. Right, again, I made that change in the main branch. Now we're in the square base branch. Right? And I can go in and make some changes. So I, if I edit this extrude, I can make you know a specific change to just this version. So again, just making you know some simple changes. Now I have a square base to my Arbor Press, and if I jump back to that versions manager, you'll notice square base now jumps ahead in terms of the list of the most recently modified. And if I go into base with tabs, I can very quickly add a few tab features here. Let's go back. We'll roll back. And what I'd like to do is create a new extrude, and we'll just extrude some simple tabs here. Okay. There we go. So adding some simple tabs. My point in this being, um, if we roll to the end here. So now we have really three different variations. Our main branch, which is kind of our standard initial design. Um, then we have the square base branch, which I showed you just a moment ago. And now we have this branch with tabs attached to it. So I have three different independent spaces to work and I don't have to worry about one conflicting with another. So again, you have that option. You can do the real-time collaboration, which allows you to work together in the same space, or you can build your own branches and work independently, right? If that's how you choose to work. So it's entirely up to you. Now, the neat thing I mentioned before is, you know, unlike a, a file based KISS, uh, a CAD system, we can actually take these variations, these changes, and merge them together. Um, so I wanted to show you how to do that. But real quickly, I mentioned before in the main branch that we had that fillet down the spine. Um, I'm going to deliberately cause a conflict. I want to explain what happens in the conflict, but. Um, I want to deliberately cause a conflict just to show you that it's you can do this even if you know there's going to be an issue between them. Even if there's going to be a feature conflict, you can still merge and and, and fix the end result, or you know um, go in and um, edit the features that you'd like. So I'm going to add a chamfer. Let's do an eighth inch chamfer. And remember, in the main branch, I created a fillet here, and so now I'm going to create a chamfer. And obviously, if I merge them, they both can't exist at the same time, right? So how do we handle that? Now, let's go back to, you know, our example in the versions here. Uh, if you remember, you know, our goal with this was to build two variations. We wanted to explore two different designs in their own workspace, base with tabs and square base. We've decided that the base with tabs is what we want to use going forward. So what we'd like to do is merge the changes that are ex that exist in base with tabs, merge those changes with the main branch. So it's important to think of it that way when we talk about merging. You want to take the changes from base with tabs and push them into, ma uh, into main. Now the way to do this is to first select the branch you want to merge to, which in our case is main. So I'll left click the main branch and that will load it. Notice again there's a fillet and no tabs. Again, you know, we're working in a different workspace. But now I'd like to take the changes in base with tabs and merge into current workspace. So again, you know, <clears throat> forgive me, um, 
we want to take the changes with base with tabs and merge them into main. We select main, then we go to base with tabs and we say merge the changes, merge this into the current workspace. Okay? And what you'll find is it'll take the changes, the differences between them, and it'll merge them all into this main branch. Right? So now you'll notice I'm in main and main now has tabs across the bottom. Right? So I've taken those changes from that branch and I've merged them with the main branch. Now the question inevitably comes up, well what happens if there's some kind of a conflict? Right? There's bound to be a feature that conflicts with one another in a situation like this and the answer is pretty straightforward. When you, when you have a situation you'll notice that the fillet um, still is on the spine and if I scroll down the chamfer I created in the base with tabs just a moment ago has failed. It's failed to regenerate and that's because in this case the fillet has won in the case you know of which feature succeeds and there's a logic behind that. Um, so in the case of um, features when you're merging what you're merging to those features will win in the conflict. So in this case, we were merging to main. Main had the fillet. So therefore, if there's a conflict, the fillet wins in the conflict. Now, of course, I could delete the fillet and change the chamfer. So these aren't deleted. You can go in and edit or change them afterwards. So again, you know, you don't have to be afraid that you're permanently making a change. You can go in and edit and, and, and make those changes afterwards. But there is a logic to how it, it merges. And it's all about the active and what are you merging to, right? What are you merging from and to? And in the case of feature conflicts like this one, the one you're merging to will win in that conflict. Now, it's the opposite for dimensions, right? So the one you're merging from, if I had, for instance, one value was 10, another value was 15, the one you're merging from will win in that conflict. The, the value you're merging from will win in that conflict. Um, so there is some logic to it, but again, I want to point out that you can go in and still make changes. You can go in and, and change features around after the merge takes place. Uh, but it allows you to take two different workspaces, two different designs, and merge them together. So that is what I had planned. Um, I am going to stick around and answer any questions. I do have one last thing going forward. So if you're just getting started in Onshape, we really encourage you to try Onshape out in your professional environment. Let us know what you think. Um, really encourage you to invite others and share. I've shown you just a second ago how to share your document. It's very easy. Even if they don't have an Onshape account, uh, feel free to, to um, share a document with them. We create one for them and they can click a link and they're in it. So it's very easy. So invite others and, and share your document. Also, if you've been using Onshape a while, maybe you're interested in establishing a local user group, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help you uh, set yours up and, and get things going. So that is what I had planned. Again, I'm going to stick around and answer any questions, so feel free. Um, but that's it, everyone. Thank you, and have a good day.